When you're an Australian student in England, you're as broke as I am. There's only one way to spend a vacation and see the country you've come to live in. Not that I'm complaining. I reckon there's nothing wrong with public transport in a country with bus drivers like this one. Her name's Janet, she says. Rather nice. Very English. And the inevitable dog. Janet's going to a place called Western Supermare to pay a surprise visit to her family. But when she picked me up, I, I said I was heading for Bristol. I think I made a blue there. You know, said the wrong thing. Well, a, a trip to Western Supermare would have been pretty good on a day like today, with such charming company. Anyway, she drops me off in a little village with a quaint English name that I can't remember. And that, I reckon, is the end of what might have been a beautiful friendship. Oh, no. She's forgotten something. The English and their dogs. Well, you can hardly call it a dog, really. <laughs> He's a cute little fella, though. Hey, I can't take you with me, dog. Let's see if I can leave you at the local police station, if there is one. Hey, great minds think alike. Janet's very pleased to find her dog, so I offer to let her show her gratitude by showing me the sights of Western Supermare. How could she refuse? one of the best sights in the world. Driving down the coast road, Janet chatted about her hometown. It's been a favorite haunt for holidaymakers for well over a hundred years. She calls it the seaside, which sounds pretty funny to me because back home we'd never say we were going to the seaside. We'd say we're going to the beach. Janet says the air is full of ozone, which apparently is very healthy. And the climate's warm enough all year round for subtropical plants to thrive in the open. This is my first visit to an English seaside town, but it's just what I expected. Clean, spacious, and with an air of distinctive elegance. But there's fun too, of course. Try the putting green. It's something I've always meant to have a go at. I'm no Cal Nagel, but even he wouldn't stand a chance against a dog like this. Steals all the limelight with a hole in one. The model village is fun too. especially for dogs and kitties. In a child's imagination, this must be a real fairyland. But even the grown-ups are fascinated by the model railway. After the trains, there's always boats. is the big attraction for young and old alike. Acres of gold and sand and 
and sea warmed by the Gulf Stream. This is one place where the kids can play all day. They never want to go home. Then there are fairy tale carriages, like Cinderella's pumpkin. And the donkey derby. Big donkeys, little donkeys, baby donkeys, racing along the sands. It's not the fastest event on the sporting calendar, though. Here come the speed merchants taking part in the famous milk race. They're at the start of the race now, but soon they'll be putting in some really hard work. One of Janet's favourite places is the ornamental park near the Winter Gardens Pavilion. I only came along to keep her happy. As far as I'm concerned, flowers are strictly for the birds. <laughs> but actually, they are rather pretty. The seawater pool is really impressive. From the shallows where the little kids paddle at the water's edge, the pool shelves down to 15 feet under the magnificent diving boards. Designed for swimmers of all ages and rising to 10 meters, these boards are among the world's finest. I've been wondering why the pool was nearly empty. We were a little too early for the beauty contest. Then suddenly, crowds. And here's the answer. Len Fairclough of Coronation Street, played by Peter Adamson. Well, he arrives with the crowds to judge the modern Venus competition. Oh, all those gorgeous Sheilas. I just couldn't begin to choose between them. But Len Fairclough, sorry, Peter Adamson, seems to have a pretty critical eye. Janet says Peter used to be an actor at the Western Supermare Repertory Theatre years ago, before he made his fame and fortune. There must be a few nostalgic memories behind that concentration. Now, I'll tell you a secret. I'm rather fond of a little bird watching myself. Well, the judges have made their decision. I really don't think I could have done a better job myself. But I wouldn't mind being him. He's got a beaut job. So time has flown, and we're looking at the floral clock in the ornamental gardens. Janet's very fond of the cuckoo. Funny things, birds. But there's still time for a quick spin into the country and a walk across the hills. There are some wonderful views up here. This is Uphill Church. It's over a thousand years old, but although the roof has disappeared long since, services are still held here in the summer. Most of the architecture is still in pretty good condition, 
An uphill church looks as though it'll stand for many years yet. In the setting sun, an exhilarating drive along the sands. I have an idea that the authorities wouldn't approve at all of Janet's Grand Prix style. Night with a blaze of color as Western lights up for the evening's entertainment. to do at night, it's difficult to choose. But 10-pin bowling's right up my alley, uh, if you'll excuse the pun. We play it a lot back home. So instead of playing myself, I get one of the professionals to give Janet a bit of tuition. Well, it's not as easy as it looks, and I'm not out to disgrace myself. 10 at a time. It's the speedway track that catches Janet's eye. Drive them like real cars, steering wheel and all. It's Brands Hatch in miniature. She's first home again. And home it is. After all, Janet did come to visit her folks. Just stop to see the fountain. at the illuminations and the end of a bonza day. I'm pretty keen on historical places. So first thing next day, I pick up some brochures from the publicity office and we're all set for a day's trip through the surrounding countryside. Charming little Somerset lanes take us to the Abbey of Glastonbury. In its prime, the Abbey looked like this. only this noble ruin, whose legends stretch back through time into the mists of antiquity. King Arthur and his queen Guinevere are said to have been buried here. The final tragedy came in 1539, when the abbey was dissolved by Henry VIII. The last abbot, an old man of 70, was hung, drawn and courted for refusing to hand over his beautiful abbey to the king's men. And since that fateful year, time has taken her toll. And all that remains are these relics, a proud monument. Legends abound too about this famous tree, the Glastonbury thorn. Every Christmas, a sprig of this thorn is sent to the Queen and to the Queen Mother by the Mayor of Western Supermare. A few miles away stands Glastonbury Tor. This massive tower, which dominates the skyline, is all that's left of the Chapel of St. Michael.
But there's more than this to see today, and it's not long before we arrive at Wales Cathedral. This majestic edifice traces its history back to the very beginnings of Christianity in Britain. For Wells has been the bishop's see, that's the seat of the bishop, since AD 29. I'm overawed by the splendor of this cathedral. There are more than 600 statues. 153 of them are life-size or larger. This front is an unsurpassed example of 13th century craftsmanship. What better way to finish our little tour than to drive back to Western Supermare through the Cheddar Gorge. time's come. It's been a beaut trip, but I should have been in Bristol two days ago. So I better go say goodbye to Janet. Now that, I reckon, looks like transport. I can't let a chance like this pass me by. <laughs> can't go wrong, can I? A perfect getaway. so perfect. But what's a bloke to do? Two sheilas? Two cars? That's life, Cobber. <laughs>